Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to continue reading from the Boxcar Children, The Pizza Mystery. And today we're going to be reading chapters 3 and 4. Our goals for today is to continue to learn how to make summaries. So last time we wrote a summary for chapter 1 and 2. Today we're going to try something a little bit different and we're going to be able to draw summaries from chapters 3 and 4 today. So if what you'll need today is just one piece of paper and maybe something to write with or draw with. You can just use a pencil or if you want to get creative and go all out, then markers, colored pencils, crayons, any sorts of those things. But first, we gotta read. So let's get going. Chapter 3 and Chapter 4. Chapter 3's title is Jesse's Pizza Plan. The apartment of Bub the Piccolo's Pizza wasn't empty for long. Mr. Alden and Watch left for Greenfield just as soon as the children got their luggage from the car. Grandfather promised to return in a couple of weeks, and they promised him a large pizza supreme when he came back. Mr. Piccolo helped the children bring their belongings to the little apartment above the restaurant. It will be good to hear footsteps overhead when I'm working, Mr. Piccolo told the Aldens. It's been too quiet since Nick moved out. I like this cozy apartment, Violet said when she looked around the sunlit rooms, but I liked it better when Nick lived here. Remember all those wonderful stories he told us? Benny asked. In the time he helped us build a snowman, Henry added. I miss Nick too, Jesse said. Where did he move? Mrs. Piccolo sighed. He didn't tell us. He just left. Now that he's gone, I hope you children will fill this room with noise. We will, Benny yelled, and everyone laughed. Please get anything you want from the restaurant kitchen. Anything at all, Mrs. Piccolo said. After the Piccolos went to their own house a few blocks away, the children settled in. They dusted and scrubbed. They laid out their sleeping bags on the bed and the sofa. They covered the kitchen table with a cherry and white tablecloth. When they were finished, Henry put on his jacket. I'm going to get the bike and take a ride over to the gas company. I know Mr. Piccolo said that someone from Mighty Mufflers called the gas company to get the broken line fixed. What if they forgot? You know what grandfather always says, double check to make double sure. Well, come back hungry, Jesse told Henry as he zipped up his jacket. Hungry for pizza. I wouldn't count on it, Jesse, he said quietly. Not today, anyway. I don't think the gas company could fix the broken line so fast. But I'll do my best. And I'll do mine, Jesse said. She gave her brother a big smile. She had a plan. And when Jesse Alden had a plan, nothing could stop her. All this talk about pizza makes me hungry, Benny said. I didn't eat very much before. The pizza just wasn't the same. Jesse didn't seem to hear Benny. She was staring at the small electric stove in the kitchen. She was thinking about pizza, too. Violet, she said, you and Benny go downstairs. Ms. Piccolo said we could help ourselves to anything. Bring up two bags of pizza dough, some of her homemade sauce, and two blocks of mozzarella cheese. Then come right back up. Violet and Benny got going, but they weren't too hopeful. They knew that the Piccolo's big, hot brick oven was one of the secrets to their delicious pizza. The small apartment stove was good only for boiling eggs or making hot chocolate, not crispy pizza. But Jessie had thoughts of her own. She turned the oven dial. There, 400 degrees should be hot enough. By the time Benny and Violet came back with all the pizza fixings, Jessie had new jobs for both of them. First, she showed Violet how to work cornmeal into Mrs. Piccolo's dough. This would help it get crispy, even if it wasn't baked in a small oven. Then she got Benny busy grating the soft mozzarella cheese in the small pile. She gave Jesse a hungry, he, sorry, he gave Jesse a hungry look. Okay, okay, Benny, save a small pile of cheese for yourself, Jesse told him. Save the rest for our pizzas, all right? Oh, goody, Benny cried. You just said pizzas, not pizza. I could eat two big ones all by myself. Jesse broke into a big smile. Guess what, Benny? You might not get... You might get to eat three or four pizzas, but not big ones, small ones. I figured out that the only thing wrong with the pizza Mrs. Piccolo made was that it was too big to bake in this oven. Violet's face lit up. Two, I get it. Small pizzas for a small oven. Then they should get hot and crispy enough. I guess the Piccolos have been too upset to think of that. In no time, the children had set up an assembly line. Benny got the best job of all. He took small balls of pizza dough, then smacked them as flat as he could. Smack, smack, smack! Violet placed the rounds of dough into heated baking sheets. Finally, Jesse spooned Mrs. Piccolo's good tomato sauce over them, along with curls of grated cheese. 
The pizzas were ready to be baked. Violet got a good idea too. She ran downstairs and came back up holding a big white pizza bar. I don't think we need such a big box for such little pizzas, Benny said. He tried hard not to think about the huge pizza that usually went into the box that size. Oh, yes, we do. Violet disappeared in the bedroom and shut the door. A few minutes later, wonderful smells began to fill the apartment. The pizzas were nearly ready when the children heard Henry's footsteps on the back stairs. Mmm, Henry hummed when he came in. I caught a whiff all the way out at the shed when I put the bike away. Jesse opened the oven to give Henry and Benny, of course, a look at the rows of small pizzas just starting to brown at the edges. Henry's mouth watered. I just hope those little pizzas work out better than my trip to the gas company, Henry told everyone. We might not need to keep this small oven going a lot longer. Violet had rejoined the others. Look, Violet, who had rejoined the others, looked worried. It wasn't often that her brother set out to fix a problem and failed. Aren't the repair people coming soon to fix the gas line, Henry? Mr. Piccolo told us that someone had reported the gas line a while ago. Henry shook his head. That's just it. The gas company said no one had ever called to report it. It's a good thing I checked. Jesse took a final peek in the oven. The pizzas looked good. But even if they were good, the children couldn't turn out enough of them to get Piccolo's pizza busy again. They needed that big brick oven in a hurry. How soon can the people come out, Henry? Jesse asked. They wouldn't say, Henry answered. We're on the list, but there are several people ahead of us. Oh no, Violet cried. Unless, Henry paused, unless I can get someone at Mighty Mufflers to call the gas company right now. After all, the factory is an important business in Silver Falls. Maybe if the owner calls and says it's an emergency, the repair people will come sooner. Ding, ding, the timer on the stove sounded. Jesse's pizzas were ready. Everyone gathered around the stove as Jesse carefully slid out two baking trays of small pizzas. Ooh, they're nice and hot, Jesse said. She sat down the steaming trays on the enamel kitchen counter. The pizza plan had worked. While the other children watched, Jesse slid each pizza onto a separate plate. See, one for each person. I know it's not dinner time, but let's sample them anyway. If they're good, maybe we can bake another batch for the dinner hour at the restaurant tonight. What do you think? Jesse asked everyone with a proud smile. Before Violet sat down at her place, she ran to the bedroom again. When she came back, she was holding up a big sign she had drawn on the pizza box cardboard. She held it up for everyone to read. He called those personal pizzas, big taste in a small size, perfect for dieters and snackers. Buy one, get one free for a complete meal. It's fantastic, Jesse said. If people could only get a taste of these pizzas, I just know they would start coming back to the restaurant. After we eat, let's ask the Piccolos if we can make some coupons that say the same thing as a sign. Maybe Henry could go around on the bike and hand them out while we stay here and make more pizzas. More pizzas? Benny called out between bites. We may only have a little oven, Jesse said with a laugh, but we have big appetites, Benny cried. Only Jesse and Violet laughed with Benny. Henry's mind was on something else. How did the gas line get broken? Why couldn't they get it fixed? Well, that was something he was going to find out. Now chapter four, the table in the corner. In a short time, the back stairs that connected the apartment to the restaurant were busy all day long. Small, unbaked pizzas went upstairs and hot, steaming ones came back down. Several days after Jesse's personal pizza plan got going, everyone prepared for the lunch hour. Try this one, Mrs. Piccolo urged Benny when she set a small pizza in front of him. She knew Benny liked this important job of all. The special of the day was zucchini pizza, but Benny looked suspicious. What are those green things? He asked Mrs. Piccolo. They don't look like sausage. Mrs. Piccolo laughed. Ah, Benny, some people, they like vegetables better. All right, Benny took a tiny bite. It's pretty good, he said, surprised. I thought you'd like it, Mrs. Piccolo said. Henry came into the restaurant and stamp, stomped the snow off his boots. He sniffed the air. Mmm, nothing like it. I'm out of coupons, so I came back. Boy, it's too bad we're still waiting for the gas line to be fixed. I'd hand out lots more coupons if we could just make more pizzas. Mr. Piccolo pulled up a chair for Henry and patted him on the shoulder. Everything's just fine, my boy. We've had more customers in the last few days than in the whole month before you Alden showed up. Have you asked Mighty Mufflers to call the gas company? Violet wanted to know. 
Henry shook his head. I've tried, but the owner, Mrs. Sturgis, is always away on business. Mr. Piccolo smiled proudly at the Albans. Now, now, you children eat. Eat this good food. We start in little steps, then we take bigger ones. The gas company will come in a few days. Now everyone dig in. And so they did. The Aldens and Piccolos tried out several kinds of personal pizzas. They each had a special flavor they thought was the best. That's what gave Violet the idea for a pizza contest. She pulled down the blackboard that Piccolos used to post the menus every day. Across the top she wrote, vote for your favorite personal pizza. Then she listed all the flavors that the Piccolos offered that day. Good for you, Violet, Mrs. Piccolo beamed. This way we can find out which ones our customers like. Then we can make more of them. The bell on the door jingled. Everyone got up from the table. The Aldens and the Piccolos had plenty to do. The lunch hour was about to begin. For the next two hours, orders were taken, tables were cleared and reset. The cash register rang over and over again. Benny kept an eye on every table to make sure each customer had plenty of breadsticks. Mr. Piccolo, he whispered when he came back into the kitchen area for more breadsticks. That lady is here again, the one who's here every day. Mr. Piccolo peeked through the window on the door between the kitchen and the dining room. Ah, she was my best customer before things slowed down. But as soon as business picked up, she came right back. She never says too much, but she's a steady one. Always sits at the table closest to the kitchen. Then he peeked out again. I think she's doing a crossword puzzle. She eats, then she writes things down. Do you know her name? Mr. Piccolo dusted his hands with flour, then pushed and pulled on the pizza dough before he answered Benny. I call her the lady in the red hat. Now Benny liked this name very much. Mm, much better than if the young woman's name were Susan or Mary or Anne. And there's the man with the walking stick. And the woman with the earmuffs, Mrs. Piccolo joined in. You see, Benny, some of our customers, they like to talk, and we know their names. But some of the other ones like to come into Piccolo's and just enjoy a quiet meal and read the paper. Or do a crossword puzzle, Benny added. Henry disagreed. Not a crossword puzzle. I think she's writing down notes for her job. What's funny, though, is that whenever I go by, she turns the paper over. I guess she doesn't want to see any. She doesn't want anyone to see what she's writing. Soon, everyone was much too busy to give any more thought to the lady in the red hat. The lunch hour was nearly over. It was time to clean up, then reset the dining room for dinner. We'll get the last two checks, Mr. Piccolo, Jesse said. Then we can get started on tonight's pizza. Jesse went over to the lady in the red hat. Would you like anything else? The woman jumped when she heard Jessie's voice. Uh, uh, no, no, j just the bill. The young woman quickly put her notepad and pen into her purse. Then she placed a $5 bill on the table without even waiting for her check. Before Jessie could tell her that $5 was too much, the woman left. Jessie pushed in the empty chair, then gathered up the dishes, crumpled napkin, and the paper placemat. As she did so, she noticed writing on the placemat. Zucchini pizza, four votes. Pepperoni, three votes. Pizza supreme, Five votes. What is this? Jessie asked, puzzled. What's what? Violet wanted to know when she saw Jessie looking closely at the placemat. Jessie handed the placemat to Violet. Look what that customer scribbled down. She copied the votes the customers wrote on the blackboard for their favorite pizzas. Now, why would anyone do that? Jessie was just as puzzled. Let's show the piccolos, Jessie. Maybe they can figure it out. Mr. Piccolo's full attention was on the pizza dough, not placemat. A message on a placemat? He laughed without once taking his eyes or hands off the dough. Well, that's for you children to figure out. Why, last year, a young, young man wrote a love letter on the back of one of our placemats. Mrs. Piccolo smiled. Ah, yes, it was such a beautiful poem. The children smiled with the Piccolos about the love letter placemat. But this wasn't a love letter. What was it? The Aldens meant to find out. Jessie carefully folded the placemat and put it in the pocket of her apron. The children went back to their jobs in the dining room. Benny checked the tables to see that each one had a menu and a full breadstick supply. He stopped at the table right by the kitchen. Violet, he called out. There's a menu missing on this table. Violet came over. I'm sure it's here somewhere, she told Benny. The young woman who ate here read her order right off the menu. I'm sure I put it back in the holder. It's gotta be there. Violet and Benny searched under the table and chairs for the missing menu, but it wasn't there. Come on, Benny. Let's count up all the menus, Violet suggested. Maybe the missing one got mixed in with the others. You count half the tables and I'll count the other half. There should be 20 menus all together. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Benny counted. Six, seven, eight, nine. Violet counted at her tables. They don't add up to 20. I wonder where the menu went. The Bicolos told Violet not to worry about the missing menu. 
she couldn't help wondering where it had gone. Why would anyone steal a menu? And that leaves us at chapter 5. So, now that we're done reading chapters 3 and chapter 4, we're going to take some time to do some summaries. So, remember at the beginning how I said that we need to have a piece of paper? So now's the time to pull that guy out. Alrighty, so here's my blank piece of paper, um, and what we're going to do with it is we're going to fold it into fourths. So you can fold it into hamburger style first, or hot dog style, doesn't really matter, we just need to fold it twice. So we're going to fold it once, hamburger style here. And then the second time we want to fold it the other way, so that we have a nice, smaller now, so it's just a little bit smaller piece of paper. And then we can unfold it. And now what we have is four boxes. So we have one, two, three, four. And so what you're gonna do now is take some time and make a summary four boxes. So in each of these four boxes, it's gonna go a picture. So no words, just pictures and drawings. So you can use pencils, color pencils, crayons, markers, whatever you would like. and you get to draw four pictures for those two chapters. So the challenge here is that we kind of read a lot. A lot happened um, in chapters three and chapter four. But you only have four boxes. So be sure to pick the most important parts of those two chapters to draw a picture about. So think about your four pictures and then get to drawing. I can't wait to see what all your summary boxes look like.